Blender 4.5 has introduced a new boolean method with the Manifold Solver. It's fast, it's reliable and it actually gives pretty good results. However, with it comes a common question, especially if you're new to Blender. What does Manifold actually mean? So in this video, we'll take a closer look at the new solver, see what the differences are to the previous existing ones and then break down what manifold geometry actually is and explore some common issues that can make the whole topic a lot more confusing than it actually needs to be and that can render geometry non-manifold even when it's not apparent why. And at the end, I'll give you the one-click solution to solve all your manifold issues. Let's roll. So let's look at the different solver methods first. And it's the easiest to show you with default cubes because then we can have some nice overlapping geometry here. We can see we have some Z fighting going on where the faces of both cubes try to occupy the same room in 3D space. And that is notorious for causing issues with the Boolean modifier. So I want to cut this cube out of the other cube and I'm going to use the bool tool for it. So I can just control minus. And where I should have a nice cutout now, I have some weird geometry, which is almost like a union or intersect or some mix between all of them. And that is because it's using the float method, which was previously called fast. Now it's called float. And that uses the simplest math to cut one object out of another object. So that doesn't always produce the best results. If we switch over to exact, it uses a way more complicated formula and it solves our issues. We don't have that much trouble anymore with Z fighting. However, it's much slower, which it's hard to see with a default cube because there is not a lot of geometry going on. But if I move over here to my complex geometry, we can see we have a lot of vertices here. And I try to cut this out now with the exact method my viewport is lagging a lot using the exact method. So then we have the new method, which is called manifold. And that, from what I understand, the formula lies somewhere between float and exact. Don't ask me exactly how, but it still solves our problem with the Z fighting. And if we do the same thing on more complex geometry, that's where the real benefit comes into play, which is that it is very fast. Like I can move my geometry around here very, very fast without the viewport even twitching. So that is where the manifold method has a great advantage over the exact method. The geometry may not be as clean as on the exact one, so if we switch around, we can see it's a little cleaner on the exact, but in all honesty, on a Boolean like this, you always have to do cleanup anyway. So if it's a little more or less messy, that's perfectly fine. The benefit is that it is super fast. So for example, if you had an animation going that relies on a Boolean, this method would be so much faster. The caveat with this method is that both object, the cutter and the cutty, need to be manifold. So if I take a face on my cutter object and delete that face, all of a sudden that object is not manifold anymore and our boolean won't work anymore. Where if I switch back to exact, for example, it works to a certain degree with still some issues present. And we also get a little warning here that says cannot execute non-manifold inputs. And that tells us there is something wrong. In our case, we know there is something wrong. I just have to make the whole geometry manifold again and it works. And the same would apply if the object that I want to cut into is not manifold. So if I delete a face there, we have the same issue. So for this manifold solver to work properly, both objects need to be manifold. So with that criteria comes the big question. What is manifold? What makes geometry manifold 
and what makes it non-manifold? And if you looked up that question before, you probably heard something on the lines of it needs to be airtight or watertight and it needs to have some thickness and needs to be able to exist in the real world. And that is a great analogy to remember what manifold geometry is. However, it doesn't always tell the full story. So I have a default cube here. There is nothing changed to it. It's simply shift A, add a cube. And I want to cut this star into it. So if I bring this star down, I'm using the manifold method. It works perfectly because both my star and my cube are perfectly manifold. And this cube fulfills the criteria of hold, being able to hold water because it's a perfectly fine cube. All the edges are sealed. If you had water in there, it would stay in there. Now let's bring in a couple more cubes, all of which have the same Boolean modifier, but all of them say cannot execute non-manifold inputs, even though they look perfectly fine. They look like perfectly fine cubes. So let's investigate. I'm going to bring my star over to the first one. And obviously it doesn't work because we have non-manifold inputs. So if we switch over to edit mode, we can now investigate a couple of things. If we go to select and select all by trait, we have a couple of options that could hint us in the right direction. Let's check for loose geometry first. And we see something got selected. There is one face selected, which is uncoupled from the rest of the cube. So those edges are not sealed anymore. And because of that, the cube would not fulfill the criteria of being able to hold water anymore. So loose geometry is one thing that makes geometry non-manifold, even if it's the same mesh. So what we can do is A to select everything, M merge by distance. That merges all the vertices in the corner here. Our geometry is manifold again, the warning disappears, and our star is cut into our cube. So loose geometry is one of the first things to check for. Let's move on to the next one, where again, it doesn't work. We get our warning, but we cannot see why that is. If we go into edit mode and select loose geometry, apparently nothing is loose. However, if we look around, somewhere around here, we can see it looks different from all the other ones. And if we go up here under viewport overlays and turn on the face orientation, or I have it saved to my quick favorites, we can see what's going on. We have one face where the normals are facing the wrong directions, they're pointing inwards. And that also makes geometry non-manifold. All the normals need to point outwards. So if I go into edit mode and turn on the normals, you can think of it as walking up to your geometry, in this case the cube, and looking at a face, the normals have to point pretty much towards you. And wherever face you're standing in front of, the normals have to point at you, which in this case, where it's red, they don't. And that makes the mesh non-manifold. So we can select our face, shift N to flip the normals. It's pointing outwards. If we were standing here, it's pointing at us. And our Boolean works again. So incorrect normals are another criteria that make geometry non-manifold. Moving on to the next one. So I've kept the face orientation toggled on so we can automatically see if there's wrong normals, which in this case aren't. Uh, let's go into face select on our cube. Select, select all by trade, loose geometry. No, we don't. So what's going on here? Well, if we go into wireframe, we can see the culprit right there. We have an interior face. And interior faces are another thing that would make geometry non-manifold, even though if we look at it in solid mode, this cube looks perfectly fine. It would be able to hold water. However, 
the interior face in there will render this object non-manifold. And we could also check here under select, we can select all by trade, interior faces, check if there are any, and then it selects them automatically and we can delete that face. And right away you can see it works. And one more time, GX, let's go over here, see what's going on here. Obviously the normals are all fine. We can go into wireframe. We don't have any interior faces. We don't have any loose geometry. So what's going on here? Well, we have one more option that we can check. If we switch over to vertex mode, it gives us another selection here. Select all by trade, non-manifold. By the way, this works for everything else too if you're in vertex mode. So it selected these vertices up here. And that is one of the most common things that happens all the time during modeling, especially if you're a beginner. Double vertices happen. Uh, let's say you did an extrusion, for example, and you canceled that extrusion without undoing it. That's when you have these double vertices here. Very common, happens all the time. All you gotta do is A to select everything, M merge by distance. Whenever something doesn't work during modeling with modifiers or anything, that's usually the first thing I go to. Uh, I, it's kind of like the turn it off and back on again of mesh modeling. So that's how, how I think of it, along with applying the scale and checking for normals. So that has now merged those vertices and our star gets cut into the cube again. And again, you were not able to see it just by looking at the cube in object mode. And you go like, well, why is this not manifold? So to recap quickly, things that might not be perfectly apparent at first glance can be loose geometry, inconsistent normals, interior faces, and double vertices. All of those make geometry non-manifold. Now the good news is, you don't have to investigate all the different options all the time. There is a one-click solution for everything. If I bring in my cube here and bring the star over here, again, we have our problem here. Now, let's go under Edit Preferences, Get Extensions and search for 3D Print Toolbox. Even if you don't 3D print, I don't either. It's a great extension to have. If you don't have it yet, you can click on install. If you have it, go under add-ons and give it a checkbox. So once you've activated it, it appears in your end panel. And then with your geometry selected, you can check it all and it'll tell you a bunch of things that are wrong with it. Personally, I don't even care about it because I don't want to go through the whole mesh all the time and fix everything. This cube basically is a highlight reel of everything that we just had. We have some loose geometry, we have inconsistent normal, we have an interior face, and I also have some double vertices somewhere. So I don't want to go through it all and fix it all, and I don't have to. All I can have to do is go under cleanup, make manifold. One click, everything is solved. Minus eight vertices, 10 edges, two faces, Boolean works fine. There we go. That is the one button solution. So if you want to use this Boolean solver method and you run into trouble with your mesh, it'll even add faces and everything. It'll make your meshes perfectly manifold. It's a one click solution. And having this add on activated all the time doesn't even impact the performance of Blender at all. It's so lightweight, but it's a great fix if you want to use this manifold solver, which I will be doing going forward because it's so fast and it's reliable. It has way less problems than both of the other ones. So I'll be using that going forward. So I hope you found this helpful and maybe we answered some of the questions you might have had about manifold geometry. If you want to see the other two solver methods in action and some of the problems that come with it, you can watch this video right here where I create some accurate dovetails. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, keep the shiny side up.